Hello everybody, today I'm going to be working on my week 20 tag for the 52 handmade, the 52 tags handmade challenge by Ann Brooks, textile artist. This time we're doing uh, something called the Pekingese stitch and I've got myself my tag here. I've already stamped on the back. I have a piece of linen that's off an antimacassar and I've just marked where the hole will go so that I can uh, draw my heart on. I'm going to do a heart shape rather than a circle. So, well, I'm going to try and do a heart shape rather than a circle. I'm going to kind of get that in the middle there, make sure my linen is the right way, and just do a little line around it just to guide me with my heart. Hopefully the fabric isn't moving too much while I'm doing this. And that's just a freehand drawn heart, so you can do any any kind of heart you wish if you want to do a heart or any other object. Okay. Hopefully I might that might be hard for you to see. There we go. It's a guideline for me anyway. Um fabric does tend to move a little bit, so it, we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. And I can stitch directly over that line as well. And Anne said to use a contrasting, uh, two contrasting threads. So my little bit of fabric has a pale pink down the bottom here. So I think I'll go with pinks. Um, that one's a good contrast. And that one's a good contrast because that's pale like that, but it, it's not a huge contrast, is it? What's that one? That's too thin. No, I don't like that. What about that? I could use that. Okay. So, uh, darker one might be the one to go for for my back stitch um, I'm just trying to picture it in my head yeah I think we'll go for that one with the back stitch okay now this is, this little piece here is four strands, so I might keep it at four strands actually. Okay, and see how it goes. Oh. I hope that's not too thick. But I don't want it too fine either. It's got to, because it's the only thing going on this piece of fabric, I want it to stand out a bit, don't I? So. Okay. Might just start at the. There. And she said to try and get your stitches as even as you can, but you wouldn't want them too big. And of course, back stitch is I've just I've just come up through my fabric, gone back down here and come up here, and now I'm putting my needle in here and bringing it up over there like that. 
hard to see that line. <laughs> so you end up with like two little stitches. I don't know why that first one is so there we go, that's more even. And so you go then you go back into the previous stitch and up again. like that. So you end up with that effect. There, so going back in here and coming out over here. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around like that and then I'll be back. Alright, I am finished that and I I can't say um, that the stitches are all, all perfectly the same. They're close enough I guess, but they're not all perfectly the same. Hopefully it'll still be alright. There we go, that's the heart in that colour. This side seems to be smaller stitches than that side. So, so I have my contrasting pink thread threaded up. So I got to start where your little stitches start, you start a little bit further, like down like that. I guess uh, depends which side you want your loop on. I want my. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have my loop on the inside. I think. I hope I've got that right. So I'm just bringing my needle up there right next to one of those stitches. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is come up. So there's the first stitch there. I'm going to come up through the second stitch. Not going through the fabric, just you're meant to have a blunt needle. I don't really have a blunt needle, I don't think. So I'm just going to go up through there, so not catching any threads or stitches like that. Now, this side you can pull fairly straight like that, but the inside you're going to leave the loop, and then we We've come out of this stitch and now I'm going to go back in the previous stitch under all those stitches like that. And it's here that our loop is forming. Okay, so it came out there, I've had a loop and then I'm coming under these two stitches here now. Now how big you want your loop is a personal choice. I am going to pull that tight on this side here. Now I don't want my loop that big. I probably want my loop about... I'm thinking it might be a good idea to have the loop as wide as your stitches are this way, perhaps as high as you want it there, although that does look quite pretty like that, doesn't it? Okay, we'll try that. So I've come out here. Now I'm going back up this one over here. Like that. Like that. Trying not to pull it too much because you want to have a little stitch here. And now I'm coming down and under right where am I coming down uh, hmm. 
under that previous stitch. Oh, I hope that's right. Maybe I need to go back and look at her video. <laughs> oh, goodness. Just trying to make sure I get under all those threads. Do one more. Okay, so that one, we're missing one and we're going up under the next one. Like that. And then we're going to come down under the previous one. You just have to make sure you slide, sorry, I need to have it on an angle so I can see. You have to make sure you slide it under all, all the stitches, but not the fabric. This one's going to take a little while. I need to find a good video to listen to while I'm doing this, I think. Like that and... Once again, just sort previous ones out, so they're all staying the same length. Okay, this one may take a little while to do, I think. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go and do them all now. And then I'll be back with you. Okay, I've done that. And obviously, because it didn't take me long enough, I decided to go around it a second time. Um, so there's two rows there. I did find if the stitches were too small, it got a little bit too fiddly. So... Um, this part here, I like the look of that. The stitches seem to be just the right size. They're not pulled too tight when you first make the back stitch. Um, and I like the way the loops look as well. So I think it is something that takes a little bit of practice. I just seem to think this side here, maybe it was the way I was coming around. They sit much better on this side than they do on that side. But there we go, two rows of that. Now I just need to punch a hole in here for my tag. Whoops, I think I missed the little mark, but we'll do what we can. There we go. And so that will go on there like that. Uh, it is a little bit, you know, lopsided, but, you know, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Now, uh, I need an eyelet. Oh, I found, I called in at the op shop and look at what I found, a whole jar of eyelets. And I thought, oh, they're, they're, they're silver and gold. They're not silver and gold. They're like a pale pink and the gold is just the opposite side of them. So maybe we'll use one of these. See, they're pink, this like, um, what do they call it? They're that color on that side, which is quite a nice color. It's like a silvery pink, but then they're all gold on the other side. So that's where I thought they were gold as well. I wish they had been white. But I did manage to find one packet with a few white ones in it online. So I got that as well. 
um, which is good. Okay, let's have a look. So there is week 20, and that is what do we call it? The Pekingese stitch. I think it's also got a couple of other names as well. It's called the Chinese stitch or the forbidden stitch. Um, I think I will stitch that one down because it, you know, it's quite lightweight. I'm, I don't think I'll iron it. I'm, I'm kind of looking at it, but I think it's all right. So, um, and I'm trying to think what I'm going to be saying on this week's thing and I'm not quite sure I'm looking for some thread <laughs> here we go that should be alright shouldn't it? it's a bit dark oh well it'll be alright uh, what did I do this week oh my goodness oh <coughs> once again learning stuff this week ah uh, so, what can I write? Uh, I hope that's long enough. Might put a knot in it though. Um, learning new things. Uh, wasn't like nothing out of the ordinary kind of happened at all this oh well I mean apart from a learning thing that I had to learn something new which is always good you know uh, it keeps the brain active doesn't it <laughs> to learn something new It's my anniversary on Monday. Oh no, look what I just did. Oh no. Well that wasn't good. Um okay, let's that wasn't good at all, was it? I will just that's a double thread anyway, so let me just I must have put a bit too much pressure or I've used that needle. Oh, I cut them both. I didn't mean to cut them both. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, use this one. This is a thicker needle. Yes, my anniversary is this coming Monday. 30 years we've been married. We've been together a lot longer than that. But we've been married for 30 years. So that's, that's an event, isn't it? But is that this week? I'm supposed to be talking about either last week or just this week end. So that might go on next week's tag. Let's try again, shall we? just pulled one of my stitches <gasps> oh no okay okay oh my goodness I don't know if it looks as good as it did before but it's better don't do that Grief. <laughs> okay, let's start that again. I think I'll leave a little tail and tie it at the end there rather than not that because it doesn't want to hold very well.
Okay. I feel like that's a bit loose. So week 20, I need to write that down, don't I, using my fabulous pen from Gail, is the Pekingese stitch, I should have written that first, oh well. Pekingese stitch. Uh, week of learning new, I'm going to put tricks, not really tricks, but <laughs> anything else in here? I've got to think, oh my goodness, uh, a week of learning new tricks. Always good to be learning more. Okay, there we go, week 20, and two rows of the Pekingese stitch and that's what it looks like up close there. We'll show you that side because I like that side. <laughs> okay, thank you for everybody for watching and I hope you enjoy making the stitch too if you are playing along. Bye.